Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Show and Tell Show. This week, we are sitting around and we're looking at things. I think we were challenged with June being wedding month and you threw out that challenge, Penetanguishing Centennial Museum. So let's see what you have. You start. I think it's pretty obvious what we have and Nicole's going to showcase it for us. So yeah, so what we have here is a wedding dress and this wedding dress is from the Edwardian time period. So if you know a little bit of history, Victorian time period was the late or the mid 1800s to 1901. And then her son um, reigned in 1901 to 1910. So it was a very short period of time that we had the Edwardian time period, but it was sort of that crossover from the very strict Victorian times to the little bit more relaxed um, times of later, especially when it came to fashion. So when it came to weddings during the Edwardian time, that's when we introduced the engagement ring. Before the engagement ring, uh, brides had a breach of promise law, which is basically legal recourse. If the groom dished them at the altar, they would be, get, be compensated because once they've been ditched, they probably could not remarry. It was sort of, you know, Victorians were very strict with their rules and usually were considered, you know, unmaritable once you have been ditched. So they replaced that in the Edwardian times with the engagement ring, but it was the same kind of idea, but then at least it had the ring so that they could hopefully sell that if something didn't happen. Now with the white wedding dress, um, Victor Queen Victoria was the first one, first royal to introduce the idea of a white wedding dress. No one had seen any royal family like that. By the Edwardian time, it would just became more common for those of a little bit more higher class within your community to be start wearing white. The whole idea of a wedding dress was you just wore something you already had that was your nicest dress. The idea of purchasing one dress for one day just seemed very, um, you know, very materialistic at the time and just very rich to have to do that. So, but during the Edwardian time, that's what they started to do. So this was um, a local uh, dress that we have. Unfortunately, we don't know a lot about who it came from because it, it was donated many years ago uh, when they didn't collect records as well as we do now. Uh, but you can see that it's made in a muslin and eyelet and it's quite a simple dress, but the fact that it was in white meant that it was really only uh, worn very little and uh, because it's still in very good condition. And so after it was really in um, after the Edwardian time that even more of the regular folk would start wearing white, but still during this time, it was still the sort of upper middle class that were wearing this kind of dress. And yeah, so we have it on display here. So we thought we would show it off. Very cool. So that's on exhibit all the time on your floor, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, obviously not, you know, we can always, we switch things around all the time, but we do have this in our sort of fashionable area of our of our exhibit. Very cool. Okay. Okay, Genevieve, what do we have over at Heronia Museum? I have bought, um, bought, brought a dress as well. Uh, like Nicole said, um, white was generally not worn. It became fashionable with Queen Victoria, but it took a long time before the idea of wearing white uh, filtered down to the everyday person. What I've got here is a wedding dress that was worn in 1875 in March, not the month of weddings. It didn't seem that uh, June became um, the wedding month until fairly recently. We've got lots of uh, examples of marriage certificates of women who married, you know, the day after Christmas uh, throughout the year. So I guess maybe it was when photography became popular and you could stand outside and you couldn't do that in March, get a nice photograph. So what I've got is a dress by, uh, that was made for rather, a woman named Eliza Jane Taylor of Oro Medante. Uh, she married in 1875 a fellow by the name of William John Jones. And this is the dress. It's a beautiful, beautiful, oh. it's a, a Jacket rather and a skirt, beautiful green silk dress. Mm. 
Wow. So it's a kind of fringe embellishment, beautiful buttons. And what's really, it's teeny weeny, it's teeny tiny. I've got a photograph here of Eliza quite a bit later and her children. There she is there. There's William John with a requisite bushy beard. Yeah. Um, so what I don't know is whether this dress was made specially for the wedding or whether it was a dress that there was just Eliza Jean's Sunday, Sunday best. Um, if typically if a dress was made for the wedding, it became the Sunday dress or Sunday best she wear to social occasions um, and keep it probably until it wore out or until the fashion changed and she wasn't able to alter it to accommodate that fashion. So this is a really teeny weeny dress. And what's really interesting I, is that the way it's made up. Um, she's got a really kind of stiff material um, to as a, as a liner. All of the seams are machine stitched, but all of these sort of accents and finishing materials were hand stitched uh, all along the edge here. Um, and she's also got padding that was put in on the inside. Oh, this is difficult to do. <laughs> she's, she's got padded shoulders and the padded bust. And then she's got a bit of a, a bustle in the back. But what's interesting too is her skirt. The skirt has, it's kind of flat fronted got a nice ruffle that runs mm -hmm. from one side um, but what's interesting is the back of this skirt has lots and lots of pleats to accommodate a bustle so she gets mm. a nice oh. booty I guess you could say <laughs> but something I really appreciate is that she has also put in a pocket it's so practical so many dresses today and even at the time period did not have pockets but uh, even the dress I've got on today does not have pockets. <laughs> but anyway, it's a beautiful silk dress. Uh, some spots have faded. The back um, has some wear on the hem where it would have uh, rubbed against the ground as she walked. And so that shows us really that that was not just the dress that she wore once for her wedding, but rather the dress that she wore uh, often. So it's just a lovely piece of fashion. So mm -hmm. there she looked beautiful. She it, did. You know, and, it, and yeah, it must have been stunning, really. Well, we have a I lot love of the dresses. back of the jacket. It has that kind of With like that little yeah that bow thing. Yeah, Is it a bow. There's a sort of thing. Let's see. Let me pull it up again. A bit of wow. It's got two buttons and then just a yes. little bit of the fringe. Yeah, just that's really them. nice. Yeah, yeah it seems to be being taken very well care of if it was. It has um, been, yeah. Off. What's interesting too is when you take a look at photographs, the black and white photographs, all you just see is kind of like muddy clothes. Everything's mm -hmm. either gray or definitely black. So mm -hmm. I would just assume that this was a, I don't know, kind of gloomy looking outfit, but it could just as easily have been something vibrant like this green. It's really unfortunate that you don't get a, an idea as to, with these black and white photos, it's really hard to tell just how vibrant. Well, I think that's was. like the white was so, I mean, I know we, we, we attribute it to being, you know, pure. We think that, I think yeah. that's a very 1900s idea of the wedding dress with that whole concept. But the whole idea of wearing white, you, you spill once on it and you ruin it forever. So those dark colors could really mm -hmm. hide a lot of that living, you know, especially, at, you know, fancy affairs when you have some wine, you could really cover that up. So I think that's why they all wore a lot of dark colors. It was to really cover all that dirt and, and, and white wouldn't cover it, you know, wouldn't mm -hmm. hide any of it. <laughs> it's such an impractical fabric choice for anyone, even today. Mm-hmm. I never wear white. I can't get the underside of my socks clean, even with top. No. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, so next week, I don't know if you knew this, but every weekend this year in Ohio is the National Pork Rind Festival. <laughs> oh. 
I love pork rinds. I don't know if you knew how much I love pork rinds, but I thought I love pork rinds. I thought it'd be really cool if we had something, since we had something chicken related last week for rotisserie oh. chicken day, we need to have something pig related next week. We don't, okay. have, we don't have a taxidermy pig. Yes. <laughs> I'm disappointed, Jan. I'm really disappointed. So you got to come up with something good. Next week is pig related. You're oh, killing us. Our vegan fans are just going to stop watching. <laughs> <laughs> well, then throw something vegetable out. Throw something vegetable out there. Okay. So pork related next week okay. for uh, the uh, pork rind festival in Ohio. And we'll see everybody next week on the show. And okay. Tell, so. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God.